Valley in the Harley Davidson Sportster Performance Series here at DuCoin, Illinois. Sees Willie McCoy come home a winner. The championship decided in favor of a guy who does not show up here. Brian Smith winning it by default. Brian Thomas gets second on the racetrack ahead of A.J. Eslin. Hart Faulkner rounding out your top five. This is the rest of the order as we go down to victory circle. and The big guy, J.B. Norris, with the winner. Willie, great run there. Big battle. Uh, you came out front. Yeah, I was hoping to end my 883 career on it with a win, and uh, we won our last two. We won Springfield for the first time finally, and we won here at DuCoin. What a beautiful track. Um, I thought I was, I was having a good race with Brian and Jake. I was just trying to take it easy and uh, figure out what I was going to do to get him at the end there. And then Brian broke, and then Jake broke, and I thought, well, the DPC uh, Harley Davidson, I know it's going to make it. So we just kept on cruising, and uh, we got another win. Looked like he had a, maybe a little little scare in the front straightaway, a slow rider. Didn't know which way to go around him. Yeah, I wasn't too sure. Um, I looked back after those guys broke, and uh, nobody was real close, so I just tried to take it easy. But, yeah, I did get pretty close, and uh, luckily, uh, hopefully everybody that went down today is going to be all right, and uh, the rest of the races will be good, too. My congratulations to Willie McCoy. Double congratulations to Brian Smith, who gets the championship, the final margin, 11 over Paul Morgan as they both blew up today. Let's go back to J.B. Norris. Brian, incredible race. You're right at the front there. Then what happened? Uh, dropped the valve or something. Thing Made some weird noises going in the corner. Probably puffed a little smoke and the engine quit. Um, I could have let it off turn, turn four, been second, been third. This is a great motorcycle. Jim Wagner, Winman Harley Davidson. This thing so fast, I can do whatever I want. And I could have won this thing easy. It's just one of them things. Luckily, I got the championship wrapped up before the main event because uh, it's been good to have the thing break then. You are the champion. Congratulations, young man. Thanks a lot. I just got to thank uh, Jim Wagner and Winman to Harley Davidson for putting together, together this great, awesome, fast motorcycle. And uh, everybody else that's helped me out, my mom, dad, sisters, grandmas, grandpas, everybody that's ever helped me, thanks. On that note, we finish one anti-climax story and turn to another. Brian Bigelow and J.R. Schnabel expected to race for the Super Trap Super Trackers Championship here today. But... That battle has also fallen apart because Mr. Schnabel had a bit of a misfortune here in the practice session earlier today. He had to uh, hit the bales to avoid a fallen rider. He's okay, but no chance to race for the title today. Let's hear what he has to say about that. J.R. Schnabel, you're back from the hospital. First of all, tell us what happened in the accident. Uh, somebody just got into another rider, and he ended up falling down, and... The rider was laying on the inside, and the bike was kind of spinning towards the outside, and I figured I'd take my chances going to the outside and miss the rider and didn't quite make it past the bike and caught the other bike and kind of high-sided me up into the hay bales, and that's about all I can tell you from there. That's about all I remember. I understand you were knocked out at the race on the racetrack? Yeah, I was out. I guess they said I was seeing some stuff, but I don't remember any of it, and none of it was making too much sense. Uh, when I got to the hospital, though, they started asking me questions. I came around. Everything was good. They did a CAT scan and uh, did some x-rays on my neck. Everything turned out negative, so we're, we're okay. They just said no racing today. Well, good news, I guess, about that. But again, no racing tonight, so uh, the title won't be yours this year. Yeah, we'll have to just come back and be a little stronger next year. You know, we'll go home and do a lot of ice ride and train, and we'll be ready for them next year. We had a good year, and got to thank Team Powell for helping, helping my results go good this year, and we had a lot of fun. Though Schnabel is out, Cool Beth still has the slimmest mathematical hope of the championship. Let's go to Moorhead with Bigelow. I'm here with Brian Bigelow. Brian, you've really had a great season. You know, you've had a lot of firsts. You won your first Grand National win this year at Springfield, and now you've got the opportunity, you know, to win your first national championship in the Super Track program. Yeah, it's going to be a... It's, yeah, I'm in the driver's seat right now, and uh, them other guys got to catch me. It's going to be a... I think Cool has got a, an outside shot of winning this deal. He's got a, he's got to win, and I got to finish last. And uh, you know he's tough to beat on the miles. He's been tough on all these miles to beat, and uh, he can go ahead and win today. That's uh, that's fine with me. He can go ahead and win. So uh, as long as I don't finish last, and the thing stays together, we'll be good to go. But uh, racers being racers, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna try to you know stay as close as I can to him because he's kind of been run away. So uh, we'll try to keep him as honest as we can. All right, J.R. Snobble, uh, you had a 14-point lead on J.R., and due to a practice crash, they, J.R. stepped off, and hopefully his injuries are very minimal. We'll see him back soon. But you had 14 points on J.R., and now you say Kenny's got to win, and you DNF in order to, for you to win the championship. Have you taken any other precautions? you do anything different to the motorcycle? Are you guys uh, saving anything, or are you just going to latch onto the back of somebody, let them tow you around, or, you know, what's your strategy? We're going to try to latch on the back of that number 31 motorcycle and let it drag me around there. If, I, if we can stay close enough, uh, 
As far as Jair goes, I mean, what happened in practice was, I mean, just terrible. I mean, nobody ever wants to win a championship because, you're, you know, your next guy in line, you know, your, your competitor can't race. Uh, that's that's, uh, that's no way to win a championship, but that's kind of out of my hands now. So uh, all I can do is go out there and, uh, and latch on to that number 31. I think he's going to be the guy to beat, uh, and hopefully me and Mike Hacker both can get up there and uh, and put on a good show for the Buells because, like I said, the press has been... Uh, the press has been telling those bills are no good, but uh, I think they're going to be a lot better than what a lot of people think. And uh, plus, we've won a few races on them. So, uh, and Springfield was good on the mile too. So all in all, it's a it's a pretty good motorcycle. And like I said, we just got to latch on the back of that 31, and we'll be all set. Just got to stay in touch with them. That's for sure. You heard it here, folks. This kid's got a lot to say, and he can back it up. He got his first Grand National win. Now he's after that first championship. Well, it's a long shot for Cool Beth, but at least it's a shot. Remember what happened in the Sportster Performance class. Remember, too, that Kenny came up short in his efforts to win a Grand National race this year, so he certainly is motivated, Steve. This kid's been playing fast all year long. I'm picking him to win. What do you think, JB? That's right, Steve. Kenny Cool Beth could be the guy today. Kenny, you won here in July. How about today? I hope so. Uh, we're going to give her hell and uh, get good starts all day and uh, see what happens. Uh, track's pretty good and we'll see what happens you won here july on your suzuki super tracker the suzuki seems to really work well here at decoin yeah it's fast it's just uh flawless and uh our whole team's just backing us 100 percent and uh hey i got i got no excuses to not just win you know what's the key going to be today for your victory i don't know just stay focused and uh ride my own race and you could bet that Bigelow is thinking the same thing as the number 11 Buell, Randy Texter, who builds the bike, pulls it up, and gets set to send his hero out to play. We'll be back with the action.